Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. I started reading Raymond Feist's Magician again last night. I'm not very far in, but I have noticed two things about it. Firstly, it's still an enjoyable fantasy romp that Feist says in his introduction it was aimed to be. And secondly, with the benefit of years of writing and potentially age, I can see why some people do say that it's not a great book, that it has an undeserved reputation for being a classic. Whilst some of the problems that have come up so far for the characters, particularly those experienced by Pug, are actual real obstacles and evoke an actual emotional response. There are already, from the little bit I've reread, sometimes when people seem to get a reward that is greater than the obstacles the reader feels they have overcome. And one particular example of this is Thomas getting lost in the mines, and this will be a spoiler for anyone who hasn't read the book, but he is separated from the others in his party by a wraith, which is supposedly mildly discomforted by iron weapons, but fast and unkillable. And he runs off on his own, with only a torch and a sword, and gets lost in the tunnels pursued by the wraith. Now, and he comes to a place where he thinks he might be safe to camp, so he throws his torch up. It doesn't go out. He climbs up onto the ledge, he sleeps, he wakes up the next morning and is about to drop down off the ledge when he hears footsteps in another tunnel that he notices coming up from the ledge. So he climbs up the ledge, follows closely behind a group of trackers who remembers the race that are hunting his group, finds a dragon just as the dragon is dying. And this is not any dragon. This is the one, this is a dragon that has, through the intervention of a magician, learned to not view humans as being weak and preyful. And so the dragon asks Thomas to watch his final death and bequeaths him a suit of immensely powerful armour. Now, the experience of getting lost in dwarven tunnels and being chased by a wraith intellectually must be scary. But the description of it where he runs through some tunnels, but he doesn't like trip, he doesn't get lost, in an actual emotional state, we're just told that he can't find his way back. We don't feel his sense of loss. He throws the torch up. It's not unfeasible that the torch would stay lit, but the torch staying lit on top of it is just one more thing that goes right for him. And then he puts the torch out. He relights the torch the next day. It lights. And then he hears these his enemies moving along a tunnel so he follows them and they happen to be moving at just the right time for him to hear the noise he follows them without getting caught but we don't get a description of his fear of being caught of there being a rear guard he hasn't noticed of them for some reason stopping suddenly just around a corner or turning round or whatever and then the dragon liking him enough to give him the armor it's all very it's not the obstacle is there intellectually but you don't feel it so when the armor comes it doesn't feel like a payoff it feels like someone finding a lottery ticket that happens to have the winning numbers on it it's not well whilst it could happen in real life fantasy elements aside it's not realistic enough for fiction Similarly, the portrayal of other characters lacks other things. There are no real female characters in it so far who are 
described as being more than a label. Most of the female characters are off screen and are the Duke's dead wife, a scullery maid, a kitchen maid who Thomas is in love with, another kitchen maid who Thomas is dallying with in a cupboard, but you never meet them. There are ladies in waiting who pass by but exist potentially just to titter. The only female character I've encountered so far, the Princess Carleen, is defined mostly by her privilege and by the fact that she is a teenage girl amongst all of these young men, so is playing them off against each other. But there's no real sense that she does things outside of being a problem for Pug. She exists not for herself, but mostly to provide him with the problem that she likes him and he doesn't know what to do about it. And another boy who's stronger than Pug likes her and so thinks Pug is a problem and needs to deal with it. And even her reaction to them fighting over it is not real. It's She's there as a driver of plot rather than the plot being a result of her actions. So whilst it's an enjoyable romp and I'm reading it, I know why the first time I read it I thought this is an enjoyable fantasy book. There is in parallel to my continued enjoyment this second thread in my mind that is pointing out that there are problems with the book. I don't know whether that's because I'm aware that there are disputes over the book or whether it's something that's developing. It's, it's not something I've really encountered before that I actually noticed this second thread. So it'll be interesting to see whether I get it with books about which I know nothing. That I pick up an indie author's book that none of my associates have ever read to see whether in parallel with whether or not I enjoy the book as a story, there is a second thread that says this is well written, that character isn't great, or whether it only occurs when I'm actively reviewing a book and whether I'm aware that there is a large body of discussion about whether a book is worthy or not. Does it happen to you or do you only ever read books in one state, either critical or as an entertainment? Let me know below. Toodaloo for now.